Welcome back to a brand new video. And in today's video, I'm gonna take you out on the golf course here at Alzor. I'm gonna be playing holes eight, nine, and 10, and tell you how I play them, a bit of course strategy, what my thinking is over certain shots, why I've chosen to hit that shot, and just basically take you through the process of me playing a few holes. So uh, on the eighth hole, I've got my tee shot away, um, and now we're gonna get up to the iron shot near the green. First thing that I would have to do here, any iron shot that I hit, I'm gonna get a yardage. So as I, um, as I get to my golf ball, I just zap it. 180 yards to the flag for me here. So now I can get an idea roughly of what the, um, what club I might potentially need. Second thing that I'll always do as well is assess my lie. So we can see that I'm in the rough, but it's actually sat quite nicely. It's actually almost sat up a little bit. So I would know I'd wanna sweep it here a little bit more. Then in terms of condition wise, the wind's a little bit off the left. So I wanna fly it about 175, the wind's off the left. That's led me now to choose the club that I wanna hit, which is gonna be my seven iron. In terms of like aim, as I would go through it here, the flag's tight to the right-hand side of the green as we look up there. So what I'm actually gonna do is play a little bit more to the, the middle or slightly left side. The ball's below my feet, the wind's off the left, so everything that's happening here is gonna push that ball towards the right. So I pick a target out in the distance towards that middle or slightly left side of the green. And then knowing that my little fade plus the conditions and the lie, I'm gonna move it back towards that flag, hopefully. Oh, come on, wind. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Well, I hit that absolutely awful right out the toe there, and it's fallen about 20 yards short. So we'll get up and see how we play that one. We can see from there that the ball's quite away from the green. I've just had a wander up to have a look, and what I've noticed is quite a big slope, and then up by the green and up by the flag, again, another tier. So I've got my 60 out to cover this initial slope, but then I've got to make sure it's skipping a little bit. So normally, if it was like a flat surface, I would play this maybe slightly front of center, expecting that little skid. But what I'm going to do here is play it a little bit back to middle. So I do get that little skid as I'm going up the, uh, up the tiers here. I've got the loft for the initial part. I just need that little bit more release as I'm going through. So ball position's changing and that's about it really. And then I'll just try and pick a spot that I would land it up towards. I can see like some shading on the green where I want to get it to. If I can get it on there, it should release out a bit. that was pretty decent. I've just caught it slightly toey there so I didn't get the full grip I wanted, but up close, not the end of the world. So on the green now, um, got a little tester for par here. And as I'm doing this, all I, all I would ever say is take time to read it, have a look at what's going on. For me, I use the line on the golf ball to line up where I, I think it's gonna go. So I've got that there. At, just a little bit outside the right, so I've chosen my line here. Once I'm over then, I know where I should be aiming. I can just focus on the tempo of my stroke now. I've got my intermediate target just outside this sand I wanna hit it at, but I choose my line, and from here, a good stroke, and we're safely in the hole. A nice little par save after a bit of a dodgy second shot. So ninth hole now, it's a pretty straightforward par for this one bit of distance to it, 430 yards. Um, and what I've got to do here is pick a shot shape because it is straight, but there are some bunkers framing the hole. What I've got to be aware of is just not getting too blase thinking, oh, I'll just hit it down there. I've got to think of my shape. So I always try and fade the driver. So I'm going to pick something in the distance that I want to try and work the ball off, pick my start line where I want it to finish and then focus on that shot as I'm going through. It's a little bit into wind, but I'm not really going to do much difference because of that. Sometimes you would see pegging it down, but I find I spin it too much then and it just climbs and stalls. So I'm just going to go normal driver. I pick my target just right of these traps and then I'm going to try and hit my little fade. Just 
a little bit toey. I'm getting a toe today, but it's uh, just up the right-hand side of the fairway. Not too bad, to be fair. So I've just bounced off the fairway here onto the semi, um, giving it a zap. It's 209 yards up to this flag, so it's quite a way um, into wind as well. So straight away, I've got to think, well, what would be a 205 club normally would be my five iron. So with this wind, it's probably adding another 20, 30 yards onto it because of how strong the wind is. So I've gone up to my hybrid. This flies 235, I think it is. So that's allowing me to take out that wind um, what the effect the wind will have on the golf ball from there then my probably my my thoughts over this shot is i'm sort of lowering my expectations i've not hit the best of drives and i've left myself a long way into a raised green that's tight so to get it on the green is a real bonus but i might have to graft from a par here with an up and down but just a good swing not really taking the flag into account middle of the green and if i get it on like i say that would be fantastic but anywhere up around the green is going to be good for me. Ooh, and that is a shot that I'm struggling with at the minute. I've hit that about 60 yards left. Just really flipped my hands through impact. Wasn't good. Gonna to have to be a wonder up and down here. So I found my golf ball, it's a little bit behind us here, but I've come up level with the green now, pin high where my ball is. Just to have a look at what's actually around the green now, I've left myself in such a ridiculous position over there, but I could hit a great wedge shot and still get up and down. So I need to know what's going on as I go here. So directly in line with the, uh, with the flag is this bunker, but to the left of the flag, there's also a little bit of a slope that's gonna feed the golf ball back towards the flag. So my intention now would probably be to play a little bit left of it because if I'm a bit short get it in the bunker all of a sudden I've got double on the cards so I've got a 60 yard shot here and as I uh, go down here another thing to bear in mind is that it's on the side of a tee just down here because it's upsloped the ball's going to shoot a bit more so I'm going to play this as if it's like 80 yards just to allow for that extra height this ball's going to get from from the um, the slope change here so have a little look. I've got the crane as my line and see if I can get it back on this green. Wind's just starting to hit that now. And I think we should be back edge of the green there with that one. It was a little bit of a hit and hope shot, but was in such a bad position from that second one. That's where the damage was done. And when you get into those situations, it's a case of um, making sure you don't mess it up any further. You don't want to compound trouble by trying to bite off too much. Just accept that bogey now would be a good score for me because of how wild that second one was. So we'll get onto the green and finish this one out. So on the green, I've hit back edge, but I've left myself a tricky putt here. We've got a huge hump that I'm coming up over here. If I get this within three or four feet, I've done fantastically well because it's slow up the hill here, really going to race off. Ideally, I would have liked to have left myself on there and use that slope to feed the golf ball back towards the hole, but that second shot was just so far out that it has really punished me. So let's see how we go here. I've picked my line. It's all about pace, this one. I know where I want to get it to. Simmer, simmer, simmer. That's got to hit the stick. Hit it. Such a quick put down that slope then that I've left myself with some real work all by getting caught out by this slope. But like I say, that second shot was the one that really killed me because it was that far off line. These follow-up putts as well, I think what we've got to do is be confident on these. Yes, I've raced it by, but forget about that putt now. If I'm stood thinking about that first put over the this one, the chances of me holding it are very slim. So yeah, it's an outside chance here for bogey, but I've got to be confident as I'm over it. Oh, I've done the job. I have done the job. I've saved my bacon there. That is 
a worldy of a bogey, really, really lucky there. Okay, so we're on the 10th hole now, our final hole, and this is a good hole, this one, because it's only 393 and it's downwind today, so if I absolutely smash driver, I could get maybe within 70 yards of it and have an easy wedge shot, but down near the green, starting at about 100 shy of the green, there is a water feature that is on the right, and as a fader, that's going to come into play a little bit. If I get one and it just goes on the wind, that could come into play, so what I'm going to do I'm going to hit my four iron down into the fairway this goes like 220 it's downwind so i'm expecting it to go about 250 and leave myself somewhere around about 140 150 yards um that'll only be a nine iron and it's a, a fairly big green so i take out any chance of going in that water hazard and i can still get close with a uh, with a low lofted i mean a high lofted iron as we go through so Again, even though I'm hitting, hitting just iron here, I've got to be committed. I've got to pick my spot, go through my normal routine and see what I would do. So I've got the, the second bunker in line here. I'm going to hit this fade and see if we can get safely down there. And that is just what I wanted. Great strike, safely down the fairway, all because I was committed to what I was about to do. So I got down onto the fairway safely here, short of that water feature we can just see over there and short of the bunkers just because of that plan that I had in my mind. Driver for me there, I've only got a small channel so it's gotta be the perfect golf shot, so not worth the risk because all I've got now is 155. I'm down the wind, so I can just hit a nice nine iron uh, the flag's pretty central, so I can go pretty straight at it. Um, only thing to bear in mind is that the ball's on a little bit of a down slope, so it would come out a little bit flatter, so it's got the potential to go further. So even here, now this wind's really getting up. It's 155 off a down slope. It's probably actually only playing about 135, so I'm actually going to change into a wedge, I think, here. I can hit a full full out wedge and know that um, I've got that little backstop behind the flag, I've got the down slope here and it should be the right number, nine iron might just come out low and just go skirting through so use the wind, use the slope to my advantage and I've got hopefully a pretty easy iron shot here picking my intermediate target and one other thing that I probably should mention is as I go into a shot here I only have one swing thought, so there's a feeling that I'm trying to work on at the minute, folding the club a little bit more, and that's all I'm thinking as I'm over the golf ball. Don't be changing it all the time, having different ones. Just stick to that one thought and go for it. It might work, it might not, but you've got to be consistent in that thinking as you go through. And it's come out low like I expected. It's caught the green, a little bit of spin. And I think we've got a little birdie put there, I think. So I'm going to see if we can roll that into finish. So you can see where that's actually pitched, just, just shy of the green there. And because of that low nature, because of the, the down slope and the downwindness, it's then got up onto the green. Normally if I'm hitting a wedge off a flat surface, um, with the wind you know pretty still i would have expected that to probably pitch and maybe zip back a little bit but by taking into equation the things that were were um, in play in the shot i'm able to now leave myself with just outside 15 foot for birdie so when you're out there it just shows you know it's not all about just making good golf swings we've got to understand the elements as well and what the the scenarios are because when we get out on the golf course unlike when we're on the driving range we've not got a flat lie we've not got the perfect lie we've not got um wind going one way or the other at the range it's, it's pretty simple it's just a mat so take into account those things that are in play when we're out on the golf course here now again just looking at what's around me i can see that the green's feeding out to the right hand side there's a high point up there little bit lower down here so it's going to be a bit uphill and it's going to work towards the right and I'm just generally I'm not just looking at what's happening between the golf ball and the flag I'm looking at the whole surrounding so I can get a really good idea of here so I've got a couple of balls outside the left 
give it a nice little roll and let's see if we can hold another putt. Stay up, stay up. Oh, just shy, just shy. But do you know what? That was a relatively stress-free par and that's what we want. We don't want to be chaotic when we're out on the golf course. We want to be aware of what's going on, be in control of ourselves, the situation. It becomes a lot easier from there. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Uh, comment down below if you want me to do some more of those as well. Big thank you to Alzor for having us out here. It's been fantastic today. The golf course is beautiful and these greens are pure. So if you remember, subscribe, hit it totally free. I want you to get better at golf. You're going to do it by joining me here on the channel. See you in your next lesson.